Hey everyone, it's Emily. Welcome back on my channel. Today's video is going to be something a little bit different that was recommended to me to do. I believe someone else created this idea, so I will be giving them credit in the description box. But basically, we're going to go back to 2015 and look at the favorites that I put in my video that month. And I'm going to go through them and see if I still like them, if I still have them, and how I feel about them nowadays. So it's only been two years, but 2015 is the year where I really started posting regularly. So we're gonna go through them and if you like this idea, please leave a comment letting me know because I will continue throughout the year and if you don't, well, I won't. So let's do this. The first thing that was in my favorite that month was the Lorac Pro Palette and honestly, still a favorite. I absolutely love this palette and it's kind of difficult to get. I know in Canada, I would recommend getting it in, uh, on Amazon or if you go to the US, just go to Ulta, but this palette is still awesome. I feel like I don't grab it anymore because of the shadow that I just broke and now I can't travel with this palette and I have to be a lot more careful but honestly after like seeing it today I am so going to be using it again because the colors are great if you have never heard of this palette which I doubt the first row is all matte shadows and the second one is all shimmery there's just no colors in there that I wouldn't use my favorite obviously is the mauve color this is my all-time favorite color to use in my crease it's just the perfect mauve color if you have a cool undertone and everything looks orange in your crease this one won't and it's just perfect. There's also just so many great colors. All the shadows are incredibly creamy and pigmented and just everything you want basically. This is just a perfect palette. If I could only have one palette it would definitely be one of the ones I would consider keeping just for that purpose. It's perfect, everything is creamy, pigmented, easy to blend. It's just perfect and yeah. Next I was loving the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette and I currently have misplaced it. If you don't know, I moved last month and I need to clean everything. Everything is everywhere still. But I do have the singles. I don't remember if I got it for my birthday or if I bought it, but I know that I ended up purchasing some full size and they currently have some uh, travel sizes. So if you can't commit to the full big size, I would recommend getting the travel size. They're really, really cute too. <laughs> and they're a great way to uh, get to try them. I feel like these are either a hit or a miss. You either love them or you're just like, what is this? The first time I actually tried the palette, I was like, I, I don't see what this is doing. And actually, it's a subtle effect. I especially recommend them if you have dry or normal skin because they give you like a blurry effect with a natural glow, which I feel like whenever I had dry skin, nothing would just not dry out my skin. So those were perfect for that. Nowadays, I have more oily skin, so I feel like I gravitate towards more really mattifying powders because I need them. But if I feel like I want my skin to still have a little bit of a glow, these are perfect for that. So I still like them. Don't use them as much, but it's just because of my skin that changed. Next product is something that got discontinued, but I still wanted to mention it, and it is one of the Kat Von D blush. This one is the color Truth, and I still love this, but I feel like next time I declutter it, I probably should get rid of it simply because I try to not keep products that are limited edition or that have been uh, discontinued simply because I can't wear them on camera or if I do, I get so many complaints. Every time I say that I can't wear them, people are like, oh, you can. No. And every time you do that, there's so many people complaining, even though there's probably a million blushes that look like this. But the formula is absolutely amazing. And I haven't tried the new ones that Kat Von D came out with, but I've heard that they're not as good as these ones. And this one, as you can see, was just a classic mauve pink color. It was pretty pigmented, it is matte, and it was still easy to use. I didn't end up looking like a clown or anything. And I still think it's a great blush, and I don't know why they discontinued them. I need to decide what to do with it, but it was just a great blush. And I still like it, still think it was a great product, but you can't get it anymore. Next we had the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, Dip Brow Pomade, whatever, the eyebrow thing that everybody was absolutely loving and I used to love it and I have not touched it in at least a year. And I don't know if it, like, it's not even that I like my brows more natural during the winter, I do like them pretty bold, but I just don't reach for it anymore. I don't need waterproof brows, so if you do, this is definitely a great product. I still think it's a great product, but I just don't reach for it anymore at all. I usually uh, use, and I'm actually wearing right now, the Anastasia Beverly Hills. Uh, this is the Brow Wiz in the color uh, Granite. And I feel like this is just much easier for me to use on a daily basis. I don't need to clean a brush. I had such a hard time keeping that brush clean. Having to do it every day with something that is waterproof was just a pain in the butt. And I feel like this definitely gives me the look that I like, but it's more natural and I don't have an issue uh, with this disappearing. So I don't use the, uh, the brow anymore. Do you still use it? Do you still love it? Do you used to use it and you don't anymore? 
And yeah, it wasn't a bad product at all. It's just not something I need or reach for anymore. I'm actually surprised it's been two years since I started loving these things. And I wanted to talk about the uh, NARS Audacious lipsticks. And it's been two years. I can't believe it. I actually got them, I believe, in December 2014, which they're still great. I still absolutely love them. The color I was mentioning in the video was this one, which is what, which is Vanessa. And this is just such a great nude. Although right now I'll need kind of a medium color. I'm actually not wearing this right now, but this is the most gorgeous color. I need to wear this more often. I feel like because it's an expensive lipstick, I feel like, oh, I can't use this every day, but I need to. Otherwise it's going to go bad and I'm not going to have like used it. And by the way, it still smells fine. I know some people like freak out whenever there's a date. They do say 12 months and it's been two years. Looks exactly the same, perform exactly the same, doesn't smell weird, doesn't have a weird texture or anything. It's still fine. Usually they say that to protect themselves. So it's like, it's good guaranteed until 12 months, but I have no issue with it. I keep it clean. I sanitize it once in a while and I keep them uh, in a cold, dry environment, which will help a lot. So yeah still performs amazingly. This one isn't available everywhere. I know in Canada it can be harder to get them. So I'm going to swatch next to it, Anita, which is another nude. This one is a little bit more pinky, a little less brown, but just to give you an idea on the colors, like when I swatch them, you might not even be able to tell that much of a difference on camera, but the um, Vanessa is definitely more brown than the other one. But yeah, both fantastic colors. They're great. If you are looking at the NARS Audacious lipsticks, I say go for it. They're fantastic. Totally worth the price. I feel like often a nude lipstick might not last as long as darker ones because they don't tend to stain as much, but these will last you all day long. You can have a meal, they will still be there. So love. Next, we have the Wet n Wild Mega Last lipsticks, which I used to wear these things so much and I don't gravitate towards them anymore. And it's a mix of a few things. First of all, the packaging, you're spending $2 on a lipstick. So the packaging sucks, let's be. Let's call a cat a cat, the packaging sucks. But for the price, you can't really complain. The quality of lipstick, they are pretty dry, but they are so bold and for the price, you really can't complain. Look at this, like when we first applied them, that was really, really creamy and easy, pigmented, gorgeous color. This is uh, cherry picking, which love. This is basically the pinky red lipstick. If I want to look like Snow White, this is what I need on my lips. And these are great, but they are uh, drying. But for something so bold, so cheap, so Actually, even if you don't think about the price, these are great, except for the packaging. These are great. And I just don't know why I don't reach for them as much anymore. Probably because they are in a drawer and I've been like moving so much that I don't feel like I know where everything is. I swear after this video, I'm cleaning my room because I need to know where everything is. The other one is because as you can see, it just broke and I just need to like use a lighter underneath, stick it in there and put it in the freezer. But you know, those are the little things that make me not grab them anymore as much as I used to. But if you're on a budget and looking for really great pigmented lipsticks, I will link down below the lip swatch video that I did of all the colors that they have. And they're great. This other color was uh, Mauve, Outer, Mauve Outer Here, which such a beautiful color. I love that one. And as you can see, it's definitely a mauve pink, depending on your undertone. If you have a cooler undertone, it will look more pink. If you have a warmer undertone, it will look more purple. So depending, it will change the color, but on me it's kind of a pinky mauve color and I really, really like it. Again, really creamy when you first apply it, very even, opaque. But yeah, it's just because it broke and I've been really lazy and I didn't fix it yet, but great color, still love it. Next thing, I don't have them anymore. Those were the uh, Wet n Wild Fergie lipsticks that uh, she came out with Wet n Wild and these were great, but again, limited edition. I believe they're not available anymore. If you can still find them, I do recommend them. There's a few like neutral everyday color that were great, uh, but I didn't keep them because at one point I have like a million lipsticks and it's just becoming really ridiculous. And I've been trying to keep it under control. And I'm planning on doing a lot of dupe videos to try and like be able to be like, okay, because I proved that that one, I have like five colors that are exactly the same. I don't need all of them. With that said, uh, they were great and I did love a few of the shades and I think I thought I kept one, the one I preferred, but I don't have them anymore. Then I went with hair care and there was two things that I mentioned. The first one was the Body Shop Ginger uh, Scalp Shampoo because during the winter, my scalp freaks out every single year. It's been really bad and I just repurchased something to help me with, which I will share with you because I don't use anymore the shampoo from the body shop. It did fine. I liked it enough. Uh, I did finish it, 
but I've been using something a little bit stronger. This one is the Neutrogena T-Gel Therapeutic Shampoo. And this one is for uh, dandruff or psoriasis. I'm like, my scalp has been so itchy. Like, it's been really annoying. And it's so staticky. If you have actually any tip or trick with uh, static hair, please let me know because I'm going cuckoo and I'm like using uh, <laughs> hairspray to try and control it, especially on camera. You can just see them going there and I'm like, no. Anyway, this is what I've been using. Uh, this is my second one. You will see my next MTV's video that I finished one. It works great. Uh, I stopped using it for I think a month because I was like, oh, I'm doing fine. No, mistakes were made. And then I went back to it. So <laughs> if you have issues with your scalp, I do recommend this. Last but not least, I had mentioned the Macadamia Deep Repair Moisturizing Oil Mask. No, Macadamia Oil Deep Repair Mask. Best hair mask you can buy. Um, that's all I'm going to say. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and if it's something you would be interested in me doing every month for this year just to see do I still love these products, let me know because it's been fun to revisit and just look at the products that I used to love and some of the ones that I don't even own anymore or some of the ones that I just don't reach for or some of the ones I'm like yeah I still love you I need to use you more. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and to subscribe and not miss any future videos and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!